Hey everyone, welcome to Plants and Politics. So I had a bunch of different issues and items that I wanted to talk to you about today. And I also wanted to share the good news that the Democrats successfully retook the Senate. Both John Ossoff and Reverend Warnock won their seats. They ousted the two truly most corrupt Republicans as far as money goes in the, in the Senate. And that was going to be a really great report and, and exciting news. Well, then all hell broke loose today. So as you may or may not know, Trump and his sycophants, such as Rudy Giuliani and others, held a rally in Washington, D.C. Thousands of people showed up and they did whip up their base with speeches inciting anger and talking about fighting for Trump, uh, telling their same lies over and over again about voter fraud, how the election had been stolen from Trump. And then Trump told them to march to the Capitol, that they needed to tell members of Congress that he was the rightful winner of the presidency of the election and to keep fighting for him. Well, they did. And it was kind of a split screen. A lot of news outlets had this whole rally going on on one side of the screen, as well as senators and House members meeting at the Capitol, and they were doing what should have been very blasé, boring job of tallying the electoral college votes. Vice President Mike Pence, that's pretty much his job. He is just supposed to get up there and count the votes and certify them, say, yes, these are all, everything's in order. Typically very boring. But of course, Republican senators and House members uh, decided to object. This is their big show that they're putting on. They know that nothing will come of it. They know that it will not overturn the election, but they're putting on a show to impress Trump's base because many of them want to run for president in 2024. And so this is their way of proving their loyalty to the Godfather. So VP Pence was up there. He was talking about things. Some of them had already objected. They had already stood up and, and voiced their concerns and their objections. And then all of a sudden, Secret Service rushes in, grabs Mike Pence, and they usher him out of the room. And nobody knew at that point what was going on. Then House and Senate members, which they were in different chambers, were told to grab their gas masks and to stay away from the windows because Trump's terrorists had done what he said. They marched down to the Capitol. And they actually breached the building. They actually got in. They broke windows. They broke the windows on the doors. They used the barricades that had been put up as ladders and climbed over walls and got in. Some of them were let in, though, and I'll get to that in a minute. They then shot fire extinguishers at the police. Some of them had weapons even. You, there's videos. If you want to go check it out, I put a lot of videos on YouTube today as people were live reporting and videotaping things. Some of these people had what appeared to be poles. You know, there were some with poles with flags, but some of them just had poles or large sticks. There are news reports now that some of them did have firearms. Some of them did have guns with them because many of them had backpacks and none of them went through the front door. None of them went through the metal detector as you're supposed to. So there's videos that you can see on my YouTube channel of them shooting the fire extinguishers at police. They physically got into altercations and fights with the police. Nancy Pelosi's office was vandalized. There's a picture of a man sitting in her office chair. They ripped items off the walls in her office. And then on one of the folders on her desk, they wrote, we will not back down. One woman was shot inside the Capitol building and later died. They rushed her out. She had blood all over her face. It's unclear who she was. It, you know, there are people who just go to tour the Capitol building. So it's not clear at this time 
if she was with the Trump insurrection or if she was just there visiting or if she was there on business. She didn't look like a police officer. She didn't look like someone who worked there. She looked like she was dressed casually. So it was either a Trump supporter or it was someone who just happened to be in the wrong place at the wrong time. In addition, three explosive devices have been confirmed to have been found now. One was left at the DNC, which they evacuated. There was another explosive device left at the RNC, which they successfully exploded. It was a pipe bomb. Um, the bomb squad, I should say, successfully exploded, not Trump people. And then there was another explosive device that they found on the Capitol grounds. There was also a noose erected outside on the grass area. And then here's what I was talking about earlier. There's a video, and if you go to the YouTube channel for Plants and Politics, you will see a video of Capitol Police literally moving barricades out of the way and then escorting Trump supporters onto the Capitol grounds. So people kept saying, how would this happen? This is supposed to be one of the most secure places in the country. This would never, ever have happened if it was Black Lives Matter protesters, if this was Antifa, if this was anybody else, especially people of color. First of all, they would have never gotten onto the grounds, but none of this would have gone down this way, and people would be dead right now. They would have been beaten. They would, have, they would be dead. And instead, what we saw, even once police came in, even later this evening as police arrived, these people were completely coddled. They were allowed to just mull about. You know, initially, it was reported that Donald Trump refused to deploy the National Guard to protect the Capitol. Then later they said that the approval had gone through, but in the meantime, surrounding states ended up sending some of their troops to assist. Many of these Trump terrorists, and I'm calling them terrorists because that's what they are. They terrorized people. This was an insurrection. This is an attempted coup. Make no mistake about it. This is an attempted coup to overturn a duly elected, legitimately elected president and vice president of the United States and overthrow the government. That's what it is. And we need to call it that. We need to call it what it is. If these people had brown skin and they had forced their way in by breaking windows, literally breaking into the Capitol building, they would be deemed as terrorists. Fox News, OAN, all these other white supremacist loving channels would be calling them terrorists. And they would be saying that they need to be put on the terrorist watch list. But yet because it's the MAGA crew, because it's Trump supporters, oh no, they're, they're calling them peaceful protesters. Seriously, go watch the videos. You tell me how peaceful they were. And they're telling reporters, many of them are saying to reporters, this isn't over. They plan to return. So they've almost completely cleared the Capitol out at this point. They've moved the crowd back quite a bit, but they let them just hang out for a long time after the 6 p.m. curfew was put in place. And only 15 people so far have been arrested. There was a guy in a picture you see him smiling for the camera. He stole the podium. I mean, they talk about looters. They talk about rioters. These are looters and rioters. So only 15 of them have been arrested as of 7 p.m. Eastern time. Eight people were transported by ambulance. I wasn't able to find any information about injuries, but I do know that some police were injured today. So I don't know how many are police, how many were Trump supporters. Luckily, no members of Congress were harmed, uh, but there was shooting that went on. I'm assuming that's when that woman was shot. 
Like I said, they brought her out on a stretcher. She appeared to be alive when they brought her out, but she was later announced to be deceased. So people are rightfully calling for Trump to be impeached and removed. Many are suggesting that his Republican supporters in Congress should resign. I think that's the very least. I think they should be impeached and removed. And if Pelosi does nothing, if she allows this kind of terrorism to take place and she does nothing to show that there are consequences for these actions, then she is just as responsible for any future acts of violence perpetrated by Trump supporters as he is. She has the power. She has authority to remove members of the House who are supporting this insurrection. She has the authority to refuse to seat new members who are supportive of this and inciting this violence. She has the sole authority to begin impeachment proceedings. If she does nothing, or if it's all lip service, I don't want to hear another damn word about how tough and awesome Nancy Pelosi is. She's a fucking paper tiger. She does nothing. Oh, she rips up speeches. Oh, she side claps at Trump. Big fucking deal. This is serious. This is dangerous. People could have been killed today. You've got Capitol Police working with them, allowing them in. Imagine if those were Black Lives Matter supporters. You think those cops would have moved the barriers and then escorted them onto the grounds where they're not supposed to be? They would have shot them. They would have tear gassed them. They would have hit them with pepper spray and pepper balls. It would have been over before it began. But this was allowed to go on for hours hours before anything was done about it. And then instead of Trump stepping up and stopping it, putting an end to it, he put out a video all mealy mouth telling people to, oh, you need to go home now. But then he launched right back into the same bullshit about how this was stolen from him. And oh, I understand you're upset because this election was stolen and we can't let it stand. He is a stochastic terrorist. He incites violence. He incites terroristic acts. And I hope to God that every one of these people who are so stupid that they don't realize that there are cameras all over the place in that complex. I hope all of them are on camera. I hope all of them are arrested. And I hope that they're all tried for treason because that's essentially what this is. They're starting a war against the government. This stuff is completely out of control. Like I said, I had so many other things I wanted to talk to you about today. I can't wait until Trump is gone so that I can get to news that's going to matter to you and makes a big difference in your life. I mean, having him gone will make a big difference in your life, but yeah, th this stuff needs to be put down. It, it needs to be squashed in any way possible at this point any way possible. I'm all for freedom of speech. I'm all for being able to march and protest. That is your right under the Constitution. But storming a federal building, breaking in, stealing items, vandalizing things, threatening people, this cannot stand. It can't just be, oh, another blip in the, the Trump saga. We can't just move on from this. Because if we do, it's going to get worse. They won't stop because if there are no consequences, immature children ramp it up. You teach them how they can and can't behave. And if Nancy Pelosi is too weak and feckless to do her damn job, then she needs to get out of the way. As they say, lead, follow, or get out of the way. At this point, she's proven that she can't lead. So she either needs to follow someone else who can, or she needs to just get out of the freaking way and stay out of it and stop trying to tell true progressives and people who actually have a pair of fucking ovaries how to handle situations.
All right, guys, take care. I will talk with you soon. Thanks for watching and listening.